Good morning, Hathor Assembly. Once like a bird in prison I dwell, no freedom from my sorrow I fell. But Jesus came and listened to me, and glory to God, he set me free. He set me free, yes, he set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. Welcome to Hawthorne Assembly. Great to have each and every one of you with us here this morning. And we are already in June, and that's exciting. So 90 days from now, you can put it on your calendar. We'll probably have snow. No, just kidding. <laughs> no, we're excited about today. We're excited about uh, the presence of the Lord in this place. We're excited about you who are gathered here in the sanctuary at 6366 South County Road E. In, we're technically in the city of Hawthorne, but our mailing address is Poplar, Wisconsin. Don't ask me why it works that way, but it does in Northwest Wisconsin. So that's where we are. And uh, if you Google it with either, for those on live stream, if you Google it with Poplar or Hawthorne, you'll get to the right location right here, just five miles south of the split. That's what I tell people. We're Highway 2 and U.S. Highway 53 split. If you go five miles south, you'll go right by the church. And it's amazing how many people don't even know that this is the Assembly of God Church. We got a big sign, big building, but people still don't know. So I need your help, people. I need your help to let people know that there's a church where Jesus is Lord Amen. in northwest Amen. Wisconsin. Amen. We're, we want to celebrate with all other churches and fellowships that are preaching the gospel today, too. Amen. Amen. And so we, are, we want to think about folks like the House of Hope, uh, Mission Covenant, uh, Whispering Pines. Of course, we want to pray for Whispering Pines. They are, of course, in a... Uh, uh, a journey right now because of the roof collapse from last winter and uh, so we want to believe for them to be able to get their facility rebuilt or whatever they're going to do and have a, a place here they're a vibrant part of our community and we're just grateful to be part of the kingdom of God here in Douglas County amen, amen. let's open in a word of prayer thank you God today for this great worship facility thank you for this great worship team 
Thank you for these great worshipers that are gathered here in this sanctuary. Thank you for your presence here today. Thank you for those who are watching on live stream today. We are just grateful today that this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. In Jesus' name and all God's people said amen. amen. Stand if you'd like and let's continue to worship the Lord this morning. Amen.
bring your addictions come lay them down at the foot of the cross jesus is waiting god so loved the world
here to worship this morning, church. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to Oh 
wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Your name is Jesus, the name of the Death could not hold you. Veil tore before you. You silenced the voice. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Jesus, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. As we were singing that last song, that those lines in that last chorus, last stanza, you have no rival, you have no equal. Rival, the, de the dictionary definition, says a person or thing competing with another for the same objective or for superiority in the same field of activity. And they give the illustration by saying he has no serious rival for the job. Our God is the God above all gods, lowercase g, gods. He's El Elyon. He's the most high God. Amen. There's no God like him. Amen. He has no rival. He ha there's, there's contenders, pretenders, more like it, amen? And today we can rejoice in that fact that our God is the consuming fire. Our God is the most high God. Our God is the soon coming king, amen? amen. And we're grateful for that today because we have need, amen? Let's pray as we receive the Lord's tithe. Lord, thank you uh, for the tithe that belongs to you and the offerings that we give above the tithe and the special funds like our pavilion and so many other things, things that we do week in and week out throughout the year. Seasonally, God, we just want to be a vibrant relational church here in Douglas County in your name. Amen. God bless you for your giving. All right. Hey, grab your Bibles and we are going to get into the word of God this morning. Make sure you read the back of the bulletin uh, when you get a chance. Congratulations to Ethan uh, Kaya, 
who graduated from high school and had his party yesterday. Of course, that is Dave and Shelly's middle, well, that's not their middle child, but they have twin daughters too, so kind of close to their middle child, child number two. And uh, so they're down at River's Edge today. They have a lot of visitors down there today. I know that because they had a lot of family members come in. So exciting for what's happening in Spooner at River's Edge. And then we want to congratulate our own Rebecca Joy, who uh, received her AA degree in gerontology. Let's give her a round of applause if you didn't know that. All right, turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 12. I'm going to go to my different microphone. All right, Romans chapter 12, we'll be there in just a second. Today we're talking about how to deal with quirky people, how to deal with quirky people. Quirky, it's an adjective. There's also the word quirkier and quirkiest, so there's levels of quirkiness. <laughs> Having many quirks, unusual in especially an interesting or appealing way, so it's not always bad, okay? A quirky, some people have a quirky sense of humor. Quirky ideas, a quirky and creative artist. I'm giving you some things from Webster's Dictionary. The Soho store, known for its modern, often quirky home accessories. Here's another one. The result is an extraordinarily fine film, a quieter, more centered vision of Garp's world that loses little of the quirky humor of the original. There you go. That's, we're using the word quirky in all kinds of ways here. As an adverb, his political ideas which seem quirkily brilliant in the 1900s. How about he is gregarious and energetic and enjoys a quirkily methodical omnivorous or omnivorous, that means you like both, you like all kinds of things is what that word means, turn of mind. Quirkiness as a noun in gaining international prominence in interior design circles simply because its content diverges with typically English quirkiness. You know those people across the pond, they're quite quirky. Donald Trump, quirky. Joe Biden, quirky. Aaron Rodgers, quirky. Paul the Apostle, quirky. Brad, illness, quirky. <laughs> Simon, Peter, quirky. Joseph Dawkin, quirky. Some of my relatives, quirky. Actually, all of my relatives, <laughs> quirky. Timothy Dawkin, my youngest son, quirky. Most mother-in-laws, quirky. Actually, all mother-in-laws, quite quirky. My spouse, quirky. Your spouse, quirky. The person sitting next to you or near you, quirky. Ultimately, we're all quirky. Let's pray. Jesus, we ask you today to help us on this journey of how to deal with quirky people. From your word, help us to have success and to grow in the grace that you want us to in your name. Amen. With that in mind, stand, would you? We're going to read the word of God. I prayed first. But we're just going to read the first two verses, and then we'll sit down, and then we'll continue to read all of the verses later on. But here we go from the New Living Translation, Romans chapter 12, the first two verses, and we're talking to brothers and sisters, or Paul the Apostle is talking to the church in Rome, and uh, telling the brothers and sisters in Christ things that are important for their life. Here we go. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, 
the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Verse 2, don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. You may be seated. God, we thank you for your word. It's a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. Amen? Amen. So the first thing I see on how we learn how to deal with quirky people. Oh, by the way, hey, let's give Pastor Scott and Brandy a round of applause. They have been filling in for me. You know, I've been in Wilmer a lot, taking care of my folks. I have to move my parents. I have to take everything out of their home to sell it. And they had lots of stuff. My parents are quirky. Amen. And so it has been the blessing that the board has given me. Last month, all of May, I was there. We had people from the church that helped out. And uh, we need to use part of June to finish up the task because it's just that large. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. And I'll be back every Sunday to preach. But I thank you for your graciousness you've extended to Janet and I. She's leaving on uh, Monday night, or actually early Tuesday morning, to go to Kansas for a week to be with her family there, her mother, her 88-year-old mother. And uh, so, but let's give Scott and Brandy a round of applause because they did a great job. And they're doing a great job filling in and all the others who, yeah. So the first thing we see here is that you, we need to pray that God will help us to have our minds changed. Let's read it again. You want to know how to deal with quirky people? First, you got to let God change your mind. I'll read it. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you. I want you all to say, God, please transform me. Say it again. God, please transform me into a new person by changing the way you think. That's the first thing he says. You got to change your stinking thinking. If you want to deal with quirky people the right way, you have to first change your thinking. They're not the problem. They're just quirky. This is part of the goal of the Christian life is learning how to love quirky people. I'm telling you, God's going to keep you on a, what's that movie where Bill Murray was in and until he got it figured out, was that Groundhog Day? Yeah, until he figured it out. That's what God's going to do with you. He's going to keep putting quirky people in your way and it's going to rub you wrong until you decide, you know what, maybe it's me. Maybe God's trying to change me to where I love people in all of their, with all of their idiosyncrasies. Do you hear what I'm saying to you today? You can't expect people to change. You have the greatest control over, guess what? Yourself and your own attitude. And God says here in Romans 12, but let God transform you by changing the way you think. Then when that happens, the last part of that verse two says, then you will learn to know God's will for you. See, it's a process. Everybody say process. You're not going to just all of a sudden, like the light bulb comes on and go, man, I love everybody. Now, I remember when I first started going to the Wilbur Assembly God Church, I thought, these people are spectacular. Does anybody relate to what I'm talking about, where you just kind of became a born-again believer, or you, you met the Spirit of God, you know, the Holy Spirit, and you're around people who are worshiping and saying amen and carrying their Bible, and you're going, these people are fantastic. But then you realize after months, maybe a couple years, oh boy, they're as quirky as the rest of the world. Because I want to tell you why you experienced that. Because you looked beyond their faults and you saw the love of God in operation in a place where you had not seen it maybe before in your life. And what happened is you let the world crowd in again. You let the cares of life crowd in and again. You got more connected with them, you had relationships develop with them, and then you begin to see their humanity, their quirkiness. But God wanted you to see that. 
Because God wants to transform you and God wants to change your thinking first of all. So this is a nonstop process. This doesn't, it doesn't all of a sudden like, you know, you take your clothes, you put them, because you put them in the washing machine and you wash them and then you put them in the dryer, or unless they're, of course, they're permanent press and you can, I guess you still gotta put it in the dryer, don't you? You gotta put it in the dryer, then you don't, it's a lot of stuff you don't even have to press anymore. Matter of fact, I pressed my shirt today, didn't I, Janet? Did I do a nice job? Pretty, pretty nice, huh? I pressed it. The reason I said that is, you gotta keep washing your laundry. Do you think if you just did it once, it'd be good enough? That stuff would start standing by itself in the corner, amen? We are going through my parents' home, and we found clothing. It, relate with me if you can. We found clothing in the closet that had never been disturbed, but you take it out and you go, and you go, whoa, whoa, this stuff's been in the closet too long. Life is full of quirky things, and you have to learn that that is part of the journey. You will frustrate yourself. You'll be frustrated with people. You'll be angry at thinking, wait, I thought these are all supposed to be perfect people or at least working towards perfection. We should, should we? We should all be working towards perfection, but along the way, we are going to stumble and fall, and we're going to connect with people who maybe they're not really ready for transformation. Maybe they're not in a place where they're submitting to the Father. They're not submitting to the Spirit of God. And God's using them to test you. With that in mind, turn and let's continue on now. We're going to read from the ESV. We're going to go to verse 3. Here we go. Gifts of grace is what it says in my Bible for the title for this section. This is verses 3 through 8. It says, For by grace... For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, everyone here at Hawthorne Assembly, the Apostle Paul is saying it to you today through Pastor Joe, do not, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith God has assigned you or has assigned One of the success tools to dealing with quirky people is realizing that you're just part of the group. You're just part of the fold. You are one of the group of quirky people yourself. And don't think you got it all together. The moment you think you have it all together, God will humble you. You know, God gives grace to the who? But he opposes those who think too highly of themselves. Verse 4, for as in one body we may have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ and individually members one of another. Do you know you're going to need the help of quirky people along your journey? You're going to need the help of people maybe that you don't get along with in the way of thinking, not just because they're Viking fans, but because they're just quirky. And you'd say, man, I'd rather just ignore that person. But you might need them. And when you finally learn how to submit to, do you know, I have to, I have to love every one of you. I don't get to choose. Oh, I like her, but you, I don't like you so much. <laughs> Avoid you like the plague. Come on now. I'm, I'm trying to help you to grow. I'm trying to help you to realize you can have... You can have a clique. Do you know what a clique is? A clique is that group that you kind of hang with most of the time. That's good. That's healthy. That's wholesome. But if your clique never allows you to let others come in, or you can't go out here and, and hang out with these people over here, then you need to evaluate if you're really letting God change your thinking, working in your life. Amen? Don't think too highly of yourself. Now let's look at verse 6. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them if prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving the one who teaches, in his teaching the one who 
in his teaching, excuse me, verse 8, the one who ex- exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, and the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Now, this is an interesting passage, and you're probably wondering, how am I going to tie this into how do you deal with quirky people? Here's how I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you something that I've learned from 30 years of being in the ministry. How many of you have heard of the fivefold ministry? Okay, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. So we usually we put the apostle as the thumb. That's the fivefold ministry. Those are those five offices that you hear about. There's people who are apostles, Apostle Paul. And then there's prophets, right? Elijah, Elisha, and, and, and even today. But I'm giving you ones that you can relate to. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. And so the evangelist, Billy Graham, evangelist, right? And I remember one guy teaching too, the evangelist is it's usually this finger, it's the longest finger, it reaches out and wins the lost. This is the pastor, he's married to the church, the ring finger. And the teacher, the, the least it seems like, but brings stability to the whole hand. It's one of the strongest fingers on your hand. Did you know that? Your little pinky. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. I have been at services where there have been prophets and prophetesses, men and women of God who are so anointed by God, and when they are operating in their office, they are like, wow. The, the word of God comes alive. Uh, they, they're just nailing it. Uh, it. And it's not always positive things. They are bringing correction in the word of God with love and rebuke, but gentleness. And, and, and they're in that setting like right here in a facility like this where we'd have a prophet stand behind this pulpit. But then that same person, same person, go to the restaurant sitting down at the restaurant, we're having dinner. They are the rudest, nastiest person you've ever seen, not kind, demanding, thinking, what's going on here? You were just behind the pulpit, and the word of God was flowing from you, and now you can't even be kind to the waitress because they're quirky. They're quirky. And everybody in the kingdom of God is quirky. I mean, haven't you noticed that some churches will say, our pastor, he unfolds the word of God. He's a teacher pastor. And he unfolds the word of God so marvelously. I mean, he's in the Greek and the this and that. But man, you can't even hardly talk to the guy after service because he doesn't know how to carry on a conversation. He's as quirky as the day is long. Are you relating to what I'm saying here? And I'm looking at you out here, and some of you are kind of typify some of those things. You're really brilliant in the word, but you know, you may not be the best person to carry on a conversation. Because we're all quirky. But God needs that narrow-minded prophet because he's focused, or she's focused, and she's lasered, or he's lasered in on what the God is speaking. And that person gets away with God and goes away from people and says, I gotta hear from the Lord. I gotta hear from the word of God. That teacher, pastor, he spends hours in the word because that's where God has wired him. He's not the, the guy that's gonna put his arm around your back and say, hey, how's it going today? Everything okay in your life? But that's why you need apostles. Those are people who are dreamers. They're like, they're, they don't hardly even seem to wanna, they, they just kinda give orders. You ever been around people like that? They just kinda give orders. That's what apostles are. They're, 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 they're the ones who are sent to go develop things, to bro- break open hard ground. And so in five-fold ministry, even as we see here, you got people who do certain things. You need them and all of their quirkiness. This church needs each other for us to be successful, for us to advance the kingdom of God. Amen? 
Okay, let's keep going. Marks of the true Christian, verse 9. Here we go. Let love be genuine. Abhor, despise, hate, whatever you want to call it, what is evil. Love, let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. If you want to know how you can deal with quirky people on an ongoing process, on an ongoing scheme, you need to be willing to just let go of things that you think are important that you got to change in somebody's life. We got to fix that in that person's life. No, we don't. Your job is to pray. Your job is to say, God, I humbly present before you Sister Sandpaper and Brother Brillo Pad, and I ask you to work on their life, but I let go of anything that I might be able to do to change them. I'm going to hold on to it because God wants you to pray. God wants you to bless. God wants you to hate what is evil. Now, that doesn't mean we don't hold people accountable if they're in sin. Never talked, not talking about that. I'm not saying, oh, we'll just sweep that under the carpet. No, no, dear friends. We will not do that. But we're teaching, I'm teaching today how to deal with quirky people, the body of Christ. Remember where, where Paul said? Paul said again in the very first passage, he said, let's read it again. He said, and so, dear brothers and sisters, that means the body of Christ. That means you and I. Verse 10, love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. I am going to give you a secret to the kingdom right now. Love on people who don't fit your equation and watch what God does in your life. Love on them. Love on them. Bless them. Do th special things for them. Go out of your way for them. Now you got to do that with wisdom. You have to do that with a sense of the Spirit's guidance in your life because some people can become clingy, can't they? We get that. But most of us are the exact opposite. We avoid them. They don't fit our scheme. They don't fit our Christianity. They're just so quirky that we just think, nah, I could never relate to them. God didn't say that. He just said, what does he say here? Love one another with brotherly affection, with sisterly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. And he's talking about the body of Christ. Verse 11 says, Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Verse 12 says, Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Verse 13 says, Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Let's kind of pause right there. I don't have time to go over every single verse, so we're going to take these in sections and bring a thought to you that will help you with how to deal with quirky people. Here's one. I'm telling you, you need to try to do it. Pray. Pray. Be patient. It might, be, it might challenge your flesh. Your flesh might get riled, but invite the quirky people over to your home for a meal. Invite the quirky people. I mean, of course you can always invite me over. I'm not very quirky, amen? I, I could be your practice ground. Now, if you think I'm quirky, just don't tell me that, you know? Just, you know, you, you know, you know uh, if you, but all of a sudden, if I start getting all these, uh, I'm going to think, man, they must think I'm quirky. Yeah, they're finally inviting me over. No, just kidding. We are starting up, back up Joe's Barbecue and if you've never been to a Joe's Barbecue, you'll like it. It's a lot of fun. And I invite every single person. That means every single quirky person comes over to Pastor Joe and Janet's house. Because Pastor Joe and Janet are just as quirky as the rest of you. Amen. And we've learned that. Seriously, church, you need to work at the expressions of God's love 
to the body of Christ. And you can't be selective. It's not your job to invite every single person over, but I do believe it's your job to invite that quirky person over that bothers you. Because you shouldn't let them bother you. It's, dis- it's, it's creating a distraction in your life and in your ministry and what God's called you to do because you hang out with them at least 52 times a year or hopefully they're here almost every Sunday, amen? Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. That's why that before Teresa left last week, I said, let's take up a love offering. She decided to move down, pretty much kind of on a whim, but decided to move down to Illinois and felt like there was some opportunity there. And guess what? We blessed her. If you see people that have need and you're saying, well, they might take that and use it for not noble causes, that's not your responsibility unless the Lord told you not to give. If he told you not to give, that's different. Otherwise, bless people. Contribute to the needs of saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Now, I don't think that the quirky people in this church are persecuting you, are they? I don't think so. You know what persecution's like? I was just hanging out at, excuse me, that's a poor term to use, so I retract that. I was there to honor Mary Johnson at her celebration of life yesterday. And I was talking to an individual afterwards, and he was telling me about their church and things that they were involved with. And he said, wow. He said, we have just really become really involved. Kendra will like this. Become really involved with the persecuted church. Voice of the martyrs. I said, oh, we pray for them once a month. It's super important. If you want to know what real persecution is, you come to our prayer meeting. What Tuesday is that? Third Tuesday, 10 a.m. in the sanctuary here. We pray for people who are really persecuted. The fact that you got to go to church with somebody who's quirky is not persecution. It's life. And I'm teaching this because I'm praying that one day every one of these chairs will be filled. We've got about 50 of us here today with kids and adults, 50 or 60. And this is kind of what happens sometimes in the summer. Our attendance goes down a little bit, but it's okay. We keep moving on, amen? And we want to see these chairs filled with people, and they're people who are going to come in, and they're, you're going to love them at first, and then, you're going to, then reality will set in, and you'll go, oh, pastor's right. They're just as quirky as everybody else. they got issues. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. I was so grateful that I was at the celebration of life for Mary Johnson, and I saw people who were rejoicing, people who were weeping. It, it, was, a, it was really amazing. I sat out in the foyer because they were crowded. I guess there was 200 plus people there for the service, and a number of others who came and left, I noticed that. I'm a pastor. I notice these things. And uh, I just was just so blessed to sit there and hear the, more about the life of Mary Johnson. And even their pastor said she was just as a flawed of a human being as anyone else. He said that. But all the things she did, that made that little bit of her quirkiness insignificant when I heard of all the stuff she did for the kingdom of God, they had a massive gathering in Poplar, Wisconsin. Not Duluth, Minnesota, not Minneapolis, Minnesota, but the entire denomination of the Covenant Church had their national gathering. Am I telling the truth? In Poplar, Wisconsin. And the person who organized the whole thing was Daryl Nelson. Nope, it was Mary Johnson. That's pretty impressive. I knew, 
I did, had no clue about that. That's why it's so important for us to love people, all people, even if maybe you don't know them, you don't, you, you don't relate to them, and you say, boy, they're really, they're different, they're whatever. That's part of growing in grace. That's part of having God transform your thinking. God, help me. My brother told me yesterday, no, a couple days ago, uh, and my brother Mike and I, we didn't get along for a while. He was kind of worldly. He'll tell you that. He was really quirky. I mean, he says, Joe, I was in a dark place. And I remember I was sitting at my office at our previous church in Northfield, Minnesota. I was a young pastor. I was just in my 30s. And the Spirit of God came over me, and I was consumed with writing a letter to my brother who, I don't know, it just it hit me. And I've told you part of this story, and tears in my eyes, and I sent him that letter. See, when we walk in obedience, even when it's maybe not what we want to do, we just, we're obedient to the Lord, things happen in the supernatural that are amazing. He told me yesterday, or the day before, he said, Joe, I was at this restaurant for supper, and this gal started talking to me. At the, I think they were up at the, at the counter or wherever, and they were eating something, and, and she was opening her heart. He didn't even know this gal. And uh, he said, she was telling me about the pain that she's in and blah, blah, blah. I don't want to talk, to, I don't want to give a lot of details because I'm not privileged to tell you that. But he shared with her the story. He felt like the Lord told him, share the story of how your brother sent you that card and what it did, what it stopped. And he said, Joe, this person was overcome, began to just weep. And I thought, how amazing is it if we just love people in all of their quirkiness and we just are obedient to God, even when we don't want to do it, even when it inconveniences us, even when we're thinking, well, what's this going to benefit? God is changing the way you think and how you react. Live in harmony, verse 16 says, with one another. Don't do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. There's a lot of truth in that passage right there. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Now that's a, that's a challenging passage. Here's why. Because Who's the arbiter of who's really the lowly? Who's the arbiter? Do you know what I mean by that? In other words, are we supposed to say, oh yeah, I'm way up here and they're down there, so God, I guess I gotta go hang out with the people down there. No, the, the, God will reveal it to you. God will make it evident to you. It'll just make sense. This is not a person you typically hang around with. This is not a person that maybe they just come in. Maybe they're on tough times. Maybe they're needy, whatever it is. However you want to see that or approach that, God by his spirit will direct you. And what it's saying to us is be willing to associate with anyone. The most quirky person. Read verse 17. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. Remember, remember, this is Paul speaking to who? The church. The church gets ugly. The church gets messy once in a while. Relationships fall apart. You all know that. Some of you have experienced it. Some of you have had close friends and that Friendship has fractured. I've personally experienced that. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. 18. This is, this is one of the most important verses. You should, you, should highlight, you should highlight this verse. Not only should you highlight it, you should just read it often. If possible. Everybody say if possible. 
so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all quirky people. It doesn't say quirky in there. I just added that. That's the Joe Dawkins version. Let me read it again. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably. Well, how can it, if it depends upon me, God, how can I do it? Because you have submitted yourself that you're changing your thinking. And you're seeing people differently. And you're responding to people differently than you normally would out of your flesh. You're saying, now this person normally rubs me wrong, but Lord, I need your strength. I need your strength. And God has been helping me because I've told you, I read this, this historical report about Eric Lydell, who was the runner from Great Britain, who his sister asked him, kind of frustrated with him, because he, you know, he, he decided not to run in an event at the Olympics because it was on, sat, on Sunday, the Sabbath day that he honored, and he did not run. So he, he, he was disqualified from his main event, but he ran in something else and he won the gold medal for it. I believe it was a gold medal. Nod back there if, if I'm correct about, I think it was a different event. But his sister was talking to him and trying to encourage him and everything and questioning why he was doing what he was doing. And he told his sister, he says that when he runs, he feels the pleasure of God. I am telling you the truth. I am not enjoying, I, in my flesh, I, there's no enjoyment in going up to the attic, right, Kim? There's no enjoyment in a sauna, uh, of the, in, in the attic, yanking stuff down that's been up there. Matter of fact, I, don't, I gotta tell you a cute story. So my dad brought all this stuff up there. I don't mind being transparent because I got quirky parents. So do you. Um, but I love them. I love them to death. He brought all this stuff up to the attic. And the steps to get up to the attic are like this. Boop, boop, right, 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 Jeff? I'm telling you, it's almost like a ladder. It's hot up there. And, and we're swatting yellow jackets away, and you know, it's just, right, right, Scott? And the backyard was full of stuff, wasn't it? Yeah, baby, thank you, Scott, for what you did. And so we're up there, and you know, we're, we're pulling stuff down, and I'm just thinking, why is all this stuff up here? What was my dad thinking? And Eric Lydell's story kicks back into my mind frequently, and I say, I feel the pleasure of God in taking this stuff down from my parents because I want to be blessed by the fifth commandment that says to honor your father and mother, and even in all of their quirkiness, to honor them. You don't get just to honor them when they give you a big kitty of wealth. Oh, thank you, God, that my parents blessed me with so much money. I'm so thankful. No, 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 no. You got to do it in the nasty moments when you got to take all this stuff out of the house and it's taken so much time and you're feeling like, is this ever going to end? And you honor your parents. And you know what? When you do it in the right attitude, and you do it like Eric Lydell did, and he said, I, I feel the pleasure of God even as I exert my body. Even as I run and my body is full of pain and I'm, I can barely breathe, I feel the pleasure of God. Do you want to feel the pleasure of God in the mundane? Then believe for that. So my dad put all this stuff upstairs. I'm in the bathroom. Have I told you the story about being in the bathroom upstairs? I'm in the bathroom like everybody else goes to the bathroom. I'm not going to get gross here. You know. <laughs> All of a sudden I hear this sports announcer. I'm going, where in the world is that coming from? I, I get done. I go downstairs. I walk outside. I thought, maybe it's the neighbor. Maybe the neighbor's got his radio on. It's, it's a radio. I'm thinking, what is going on? And then I go back up there the next day, because I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> I'm, th I'm thinking, where is this coming from? So I go in my dad's old bedroom. I go down this little hallway. He's got the, it was like a little kitchenette area. Maybe sometimes some of you will come and just check it out. And I listen down there, and I go, man, there's no noise. There's no radio going on. 
Well, the first time we cracked open the doors to go upstairs into the attic, the mystery was solved. My dad had put a radio up there and left it on. And I said to my brother Tommy, I said, when's the last time dad was upstairs? He said like 13 years ago. (laughs) That radio had been playing upstairs for 13 years. KWLM, your good neighbor in Wilmer, Minnesota, man. I kid you not. Now, is that not funny? That's kind of funny. I love it. I love it. It's stories I get to share. And I get to feel the pleasure of God in all the quirkiness of life. I'll tell you another story that's even more wonderful. Not today. It happened. It just happened, didn't it, Kim? About, about with the city of Wilmer. I'm not going to go any further. Just going to tell you that because I got people that might hear this. And, but anyway... Your pastor was almost sinning. Thinking, thinking bad about people. I was thinking bad about people and how quirky they are. And they're no good, double dog, nasty, you know, getting me in trouble kind of people. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourself. Pastor Joe was trying this last week to avenge myself, but here, here, this is one of the best verses. I am telling you, this is where most of us fail. As we wrap it up, here's where most of us fail. We jump the gun. We, we, we get ahead and figure, I'll solve it. God's going to use me to whoop you. Okay? I'm telling you the truth. I've learned this both ways. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says Lord. Now, I'm not asking you to say, okay, Lord, go whoop up that neighbor who's so quirky. I just hope you just, you know, let let their home be invaded by whatever. No, we're not praying that way. But what we're saying is we don't take God's position with quirky people. You don't do God's work. It's not your work. It's God's work. If God needs to uh, straighten somebody out, he will. Because the moment you do it, guess what? God goes, well, I can't do it now. Because you just jumped in and messed it all up. And that's a hard thing to learn. That's a hard thing to learn. But here's what happens. I've had relationships where there were some quirky people and they they didn't want my success they wanted my failure and i wanted to defend myself you ever been there where you want to defend yourself with christians you can't do it you got to be humble you got to sometimes bite your tongue you sometimes have to just smile and i'm not telling you that you wink at sin once again we're not talking about winking at sin we're just talking about conflict. Amen? you got to make room for God. And so you love people. Like the Scripture says, here, let's look at it again. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Let's jump down to verse 21 because we're done. Let's look at the very last verse. If in this passage... now. That, that, Think about this with me. If in this passage, the Lord says through the Apostle Paul, if he says in verse 21, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. If we're supposed, if that's the, if that's the methodology, right? Are you with me? If that's the methodology for evil things, do you think it might not work for quirky people? If that's the answer for evil, and I don't see you all as evil, I just see people as quirky. So let's change that word. Do not be overcome by quirkiness, but overcome quirkiness with good. My my goal is to hear the Lord say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your... And I believe the biggest test 
is how we love one another. Love the Lord your God with all your what? And what's the second that's almost like the first he says? To love your quirky neighbor as you love yourself. Bow your heads and pray with me this morning. Lord Jesus, thank you. I'm thankful that you made me quirky so that people will genuinely love me. And I'm thankful that the people that hear me today are quirky so that I will be empowered by your love so that I will be filled with your spirit, so that I will be motivated and moved by your presence that these people are worth your love, they're worth your time, they're worth breaking bread together with, they are worth everything, God, because you hung on a cross to pay the price of their sin and my sin. And so we're so grateful for that today, God. And so when we think about how we can deal with quirky people, We ask you, first of all, to help us that we change the way we think. And God, if your word is is being shared with us, as the Apostle Paul shared it with brothers and sisters in Rome, it it has great volume and great application for us here at Hawthorne Assembly as part of the body of Christ. And we agree to it. We submit to it. We say yes and amen, God. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And we believe that what you've said here in Romans 12 completely helps us in our daily journey. It helps us to walk in victory when things don't always go the way we expect or people don't act the way we think they should. God, you are going to help us to love people in all of their idiosyncrasies, to love them in all of their failures, to love them in all of their uniqueness, to love them as the quirky individual you created. And we thank you for that today now in your name. Amen. Stand with me this morning. We've got one last worship song. And uh, we always open the altar. You know that. If you have any need this morning, the altars are open. I don't want to beg you to come. I don't want to cajole you to come. I want the Spirit of God to move you to come if you need to prayer this morning. Amen. All who are thirsty, all who are weak, come to the fountain, dip your heart in the stream.
I'm so thankful for the, when I was a young youth pastor, and I remember Sam Brassfield, at moments the presence of God would be so strong on this brother's life. He was as quirky as the day is long, I'm telling you. Um, I'll tell you a story about him sometime. But he sensed the presence of God, and people got healed. People need to get healed here at Hawthorne Assembly. Even today, we're believing for Kendra. She needs a healing in her back of her calf. Ken's having minor surgery. Jean's, her skin has been reacted by whatever since she's been to the cabin. She's not sure what it is, but it's causing her skin to flare up. Let's believe for healing right now. If you're out here today, believe for, say, God, I'm here. God, I'm here. God, touch me right now. I need you. 
I remember when I was stumbling, could barely walk straight. I cried out to God and he began to heal me because I was desperate and I cried out. I was vulnerable. I said, God, I need you. God, we need you today. There are people in this congregation that need your touch today, God. They need your healing upon their bodies. Even these bodies that are outwardly wasting away. God, we thank you that you want to touch us and you want to restore us. Even though these things are temporal, even one day they're going to go back into the ground. We thank you, Jesus, that you want to heal us and you want to restore us and bring life and vitality to us. Receive it today. Just fall under God's grace. You're worthy because of the blood of Jesus today. You're not worthy because you know so many scriptures. It helps to know scriptures about healing. But you're worthy because he's worthy. You're worthy because you believe he heals. You're like the woman who said, if I just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. God, we just want to touch the hem of your garment today. We want you to heal God. We're believing for you to heal God, these people who have needs in their body. Thank you, Jesus. We stretch our faith for our sister. We stretch our faith for our brother. We stretch our faith for our loved ones who needs a miracle today. Yes, God. Yes, God. Show yourself strong, God. We thank you. Let's thank him now. Let's thank him. That's a secret to healing is to thank him. I don't know how many times you praise him, but thank him. Thank him for your healing. Thank him for the answer. Thank him for a miracle. Thank him for a breakthrough. Thank him that your, your, that your body recovers. We just thank you, God, that Sandra will get complete healing in her shoulder. Yes, God. Johnny will have complete healing of all that, has been, that was attacking him. We're going to believe for miracles for the campground where the mosquitoes are so bad that they're not sure what to do. We're going to believe for a miracle. We're going to believe for some breakthrough. We're going to believe God so those kids are not distracted and those kids will get filled with the Holy Ghost. They'll get called. God, there are kids that need to be called into the mission field this year. We are not going to let mosquitoes stop this from happening. We are not going to let anything stop the work of God. Oh, God. Whatever you need to do, God, you do it, Lord. Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, hug somebody's neck today. Love on them. Love on that quirky person next to you. Amen. God bless you. You have a great day. You're dismissed.